Okay, so on this slide, we're going to talk about the origin of the chemical shift. Okay, so previously in the, in the lecture, and probably in future lectures too, most of the time when I'm taught, I say like the proton frequency is proportional to the magnetic field. Okay, but this is for an isolated proton. So this is sort of a generic and like if you have a real molecule, if you just use this formula, then every proton would have the same chemical shift, the same frequency, so the same chemical shift. And so we're going to make a slight modification to that formula and by adding in this term, the 1 minus sigma term. And this sigma is, uh, has nothing to do with a sigma bond like in organic or inorganic chemistry. This is this sigma is the shielding constant, okay? And so it's going to modify the magnetic field term to account for um, the chemical environment. So sigma is a dimensionless quantity. Sigma is magnetic field independent. And the value of sigma depends on the electronic slash chemical environment. So that's where you basically, for every different proton in a molecule, or different type of proton, you get a different chemical shift because it's going to have a different sigma value, okay? And here I'm drawn out, you know, a typical NMR spectrum has goes from 0 to 10 ppm, but remember previously, that's really a frequency scale that we've kind of um, uh, normalized to. And so let, let's say we have ethanol here and uh, removing the electron density from a proton, say this proton or this proton, uh, makes sigma smaller. So we know from organic that this uh, oxygen will have uh, some uh, inductive withdrawal of electron density from protons near it, okay? So this de-shields the protons, removing electron density, and moves the NMR peak to higher ppm. So that's why we expect these protons here on the OH group and near the CH2 to be at higher ppms than, say, this uh, methyl group protons, okay? So we say the smaller sigma, because removing electron density decreases sigma's value, deshields it and moves the um, uh, peak to higher ppm's or higher frequency, you could say. So that's where we say that's the origin of the chemical shift. This shielding constant that is dependent on the electronic a slash chemical environment of the proton. And depending on its value is going to determine ultimately where, where your chemical shift is. The other thing in locking, as we've just described in the videos, is ultimately we want to get to this uh, plateau situation. Okay, and so I want to kind of describe where this is coming from. So we have two frequencies, the spectrometer frequency at the lock channel, okay, and so it's at some certain frequency, say 76 megahertz, or it, it depends on the, on the magnet, okay. And then we have the frequency of the deuterium in your sample, okay, which is a function of Z0. Remember Z0 was the global magnetic field parameter. So the magnetic field that your proton or deuterium sees is proportional to z uh, zero, okay? And so we say the frequency of that deuterium is proportional to uh, b zero, and I've added in the shielding constant. So if we look at here's the frequency of the spectrometer, and then here's the frequency of the deuterium, and we're kind of moving it around because of z zero, and we take that difference and plot it. If we're far away, so it's 100 minus 90, then we get a high frequency sine wave. And as we move closer, that frequency went down. And as we get even closer, so now the difference is very tiny, it's even lower. And then when we're right at the right frequency, the spectrometer frequency and, z and your deuterium frequency, so this is the spectrometer and this is deuterium, 
And then it's just basically a constant value, which is our oops, plateau. So that's really where it's coming from.